welcome to 6-5 on the Road. I'm Melody Brew. I'm here at WebEx One in San Diego. I have here with me Snorri Kejbu, SVP and GM of Cisco Collaboration, and Deepu Tala, VP of Robotics and Edge AI at NVIDIA. Welcome. Thank you for having us. Yeah, thank you, you guys for being here. So I made a little bit of a joke yesterday about having somebody from NVIDIA on the stage at a big conference. And I said, so if you don't have somebody from NVIDIA on the stage, do you even AI? But you guys have a really long history, a very deep relationship. Tell me a little bit about that, when it started and how that kind of gives you a little bit of a, no pun intended, edge in this, in this space. Yeah, so at Cisco, we've been developing uh, equipment for people to people communication for a long time. And, uh, you know, uh, 10 years ago, we were really at a shift in our technology. We were actually looking for new technology. And in that time, we actually saw a company called NVIDIA. And, you know, today it's so obvious that they're the coolest kids on the block. A decade ago, they were still the coolest kid on the blocks, but no one knew. Not as known. Not, not as known. Mm -hmm. And then we sat down and, and we start looking at, uh, at, the common possibility of really developing things on the edge and out in the video conferencing equipment uh, together with using machine learning, as we discussed at the time, and, and AI, and how that can, could improve that. And then I was lucky enough to meet uh, Deepu, who's one of the smartest people I know. And, uh, and we started discussing, and, and we started the partnership a year later the first uh, products came out from uh, in Cisco. Yeah, I mean, very well said, Snowy. And uh, from our perspective, you know, NVIDIA is a platform computing company. We work with the leaders in the industry, whichever vertical space. We always pride in working in a deep technology partnership. Yeah. Right. So even though it's been 10 years, this is exactly how we expect it. Multi-decade, deep technology partnership, where we take our technology and help Cisco integrate our technology into their product and platform. What was that first product that you developed together? The first product we developed together was actually a video conferencing uh, unit. Uh, it was a, a it was a barn that we uh, that we have, and we have that product line still, but obviously with brand new technology because we've been together working through number of generations of of technology from uh, from Manvid. Yeah. It's a great long history. So you talk about AI at the edge, in the cloud, and in control. You call it a precisely composed plate rather than an AI stew. So can you break that down for us in terms of what that means and why it matters for your customers? Yeah, let me just tee it up briefly and then pass it to, to Deepu. Uh, you know, I meet a lot of uh, people, a lot of customers, a lot of organizations, and a number of them look at AI as just one massive thing, or what I say is that they throw everything into one saucepan and try to make a stew. I think the way to think about AI is that, first of all, it's the most significant shift that we've seen in our lifetime. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the second piece is that there's, there are different ways to do it. We think about it as AI at the edge, which is what you can actually do out uh, all the way at the edge, in our case, in the video conferencing unit. AI in the clouds around large language models, uh, where you have a ton of processing, and really advanced things that can be done. And then with Cisco, we talk a lot about AI for control, which is actually helping the ones that own and operate uh, um, the, the equipment as well so that they can scale and get superpowers. Good, Good way to put it, superpowers. <laughs> so when, when people are talking about the edge, turns out there's device edge, and you can break down the edge into multiple levels, but the easiest way to think about it is in the device or in the machine and something on-premise, and then there's data center. And AI is mostly, depending on the use case, going to be hybrid edge cloud. Wherever the AI makes sense to run for that particular algorithm or particular use case, mm -hmm. it's most of the time what we end up seeing is it's going to be hybrid. Instead of layering AI on top, you're embedding it into the devices. So how does that change the experience for the end user? We're actually doing both, uh, but by also having the capabilities in the devices, uh, and a number of things there that you can do it really fast. You can really do it on really high resolution images that you don't have to transport back, which makes it snappy. 
it makes it, it quick. It can do the things that you want. Like now we've just launched what we call the director or the AI director, because it's really having a director in the device that produce the most optimum view from any type of room. And having the NVIDIA capabilities all the way out in the device is providing a massive uh, competitive advantage for us because we can do so many things with it. Yeah, when we first started this journey 10 years ago, a lot of the embedded and AI development was monolithic software. Yeah. Whereas if you look at the latest, latest technology in cloud, it's disaggregated, distributed, and compute can scale up or scale out. That software was not available in device. But in the last five years, the whole industry has migrated to be hybrid edge cloud. It's called cloud native. Mm -hmm. You can run whichever piece of software, wherever it makes sense. Because of that, now we are seeing the fungibility. Mm -hmm. Today, you might decide that, you know, there's a new software capability. The edge processor might not be powerful enough, so you start with the cloud. Mm -hmm. But then tomorrow, it might be optimized and you might be able to move it to the edge. So that gives you the flexibility to move it hybrid edge and cloud. That flexibility. So that's really part of the employee experience, the end user experience. When they're in that room and they, what you call distance zero, where everybody feels like they could be in, in front of each other. And actually, this was so great for me. I got to experience this last week at the Austin opening of the Cisco office. So many of the things that you know, I've seen in discussions, in, in renderings, really came to life in that office building. And it's really come to life here. So when you look at you know, eliminating that friction, allowing for you know, everybody to be sort of seen, heard, what does that mean to you, distance zero, and how much, how much is the technology embedded into that, really enabling that experience to come to life for people? You know, so distance zero is a vision. Mm -hmm. And on the way to distance zero, we're taking a number of steps. I think I'm going to chase distance zero for the rest of my life. And I like that. That's actually putting a really bold uh, goal, having just two words you're trying to strive for. And it's all about see and be seen. It's all about heard and be uh, to hear and, and, and be heard. But I think that it's more than that. So that's all about the experience when we are in the room. But what we do is to combine that with what Deepu just said as well, is that to combine that with uh, all the capabilities that you can have with AI in the cloud as well. So one of the things that we have launched now, for instance, is that even in a local meeting, you can actually have the note taker, which will allow you in any type of meeting, you just press uh, a button, even if there's no one distance, to use the cloud for taking the notes also, also, also there. So I think what you will see, and this is just scratching the surface, surface on this day, and I think we should talk about some of the dreams we have going forward about what more we can do. But I think it's combining them. Uh, that's where the power really, uh, really is. How does NVIDIA can work into that vision? Where is that? And I think that vision is becoming a reality. I mean, it's really, it's, it was very clearly illustrated in the office in Austin and other, you know, other offices that you have. But I loved seeing it there. I loved seeing it at the demo floor yesterday, allowing people to really experience that. So how does, how does NVIDIA fit into that vision? That's perfect for us because we are providing the computer, runtime computer, it's the fastest you can buy in the industry at the lowest power possible. And it's fully software programmable. And it provides all the latest, greatest AI. And we continue to update the software. That's the other key part. So when Cisco launches a Rebex device, an example, that's just the beginning. It's not the end of the product. For the next several years, they're updating software, adding new features and capabilities. And that comes because we are it's a programmable processor and we are able to offer our technology and Cisco is able to leverage the, that technology. For example, you can imagine that in the near future, there's going to be more and more LLMs or VLMs that are going to be running on the WebEx devices. And the hardware is not going to change. It's hardware that they already released, right? We can update in software. So NVIDIA and Cisco, that's a perfect partnership because of the, the technology capability that we bring in and we embed our technology into Cisco's products. And if I can tag on to that, so one thing that NVIDIA and, and Deepu and his team has done a lot is to challenge us because they come at this from a different angle than us and he will ask questions, but why don't you do this? Or have you thought of that? And 
but, and I'll take one example that we're launching here, which is actually what we call the digital twin. And I think you spoke about it very early, uh, great earlier here today, which is, you know, when you're training robots on just robots, you're doing that at the, uh, the clock speed, the regular clock speed, you're not getting any advantages. And you haven't then built models and simulation that's really driving it there. When you said that to us, we started thinking, hmm, what if we take and build a digital twin of the room? And we take the digital twin of the room, then we can test out where you place the microphones, what the surface is like, what is the acoustics like, how can you tune that? And I think that the greatness of this partnership has been the way that NVIDIA has been challenging us to really think differently about what we can deliver. And that tool is for the first time helping the IT organization with the physical room. And they have been able to do that before. So I think that uh, that came out of a discussion you and I had. Fantastic. That's music to my ears. We have more products to sell you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was impressive, the digital twin. I mean, it, when you think about how many times people have to redo things, reconfigure, and that gives people the ability to really actually see it, test it in that. It, I mean, it's, it's kind of mind-blowing when you think about it, that you really can simulate that experience. Um, you talked a little bit today, or we heard a little bit today in the keynote about some of the features that are being surfaced, like being able to control noise and exactly what parts of the room you want to tune out. So how does that, like when you test with a digital twin, how does that enable companies to really plan well? No, what digital twin is doing is that it allows us to simulate the physical room. And uh, with our AI ceiling microphone pro, um, we can then actually run that. We can look at coverage, but we could also have all your exclusion zones, for instance, where the door is or whether it might be more noise. You could actually then test that in the digital twin. And when you see that that coverage is right, then you can actually roll it out in the real world. So you get what they are doing on steroids when it comes to simulation. In our way of doing it, we can actually allow the IT organization to try out things on the digital twin and then apply it, uh, apply it in hardware afterwards. Yeah, in fact, if you look at this, tech, this capability of the so-called digital twin, is actually one of the first use cases. You're seeing it across factories. Mm -hmm. Before you even lay out a factory, mm -hmm. where would you place all your workstations? What's the ideal spacing for machines to move, humans to work, the work cells? Mm -hmm. All of that, or the simulating the light, and you know, all of that is now moving on to digital twins because the change orders are going to be significantly reduced and the time to market or the time to build is significantly faster. We're seeing that in, across multiple industries. In, in fact, the, uh, one of, we, we have a, uh, one of our partners, Foxconn, who builds our latest uh, AI infrastructure products based on Grace Blackwell 200. There's a 400 meter long factory that was built in Guadalajara and they're building one more in Houston right now as we speak. Uh, that was all modeled in a digital twin before, you know, you had real construction begin. Yeah. Where do the robots go? Where do humans go? Where does it, how do you model the different traffic patterns? So virtual factory initiative is what we call it. So that same idea absolutely makes sense for WebEx to make it easy to set up a conference room instead of doing so many trial and errors of, yes. you know, moving things. You can do all of that in a digital twin and you get a fairly good answer and then you exactly know where to place all the different sensors. Setup will become far easier. It's really amazing how smart the technology is when you can, it knows the difference between a person in the room or a person outside of a window. It's really actually quite impressive. So this partnership, it's been a long time in the making. You have huge visions. Over the next three to five years, you said this could be, you know, it's two words that guide you for could be for the rest of your life or for the rest of your career. But what does this partnership look like? What are your big kind of the big dreams and what are you thinking about having? It's great that you challenge one another, but where do you see something next coming up? Well, one of the things I observed working in robotics for the last 10 years, there was every year there was pretty good improvement compared to the previous year. Until a couple of years ago, Suddenly, with chat GPT and that type of technology, AI improvements are happening in step function. What I'm super excited by and can't wait to see is how 
the collaboration team at Cisco is going to take advantage of some of these new capabilities and suddenly the is going to be a step function capability with respect to the meeting rooms. I, I can't wait to see that. And if I can add on to that, you know, up to now, we have mostly been focusing on people-to-people -people communication. But what you will see as well is it will be people-to-AI and AI-to-AI. And I think that one of the things that I'm super excited about is not only will there be people in the meeting, but there will be AI, um, uh, you know, resources in that meeting, really like a coworker, an AI coworker that's, that's next to me. To be able to include these as well, and then AI to AI as well, is how between our AI agent, do you actually communicate and pass data? So what used to be only people to people will be people to people, people to AI, and AI to AI. That's interesting. Yeah, I mean, you can think of, we are in a meeting, and we are talking about something, a massive spreadsheet. You can now ask an AI, crunch that spreadsheet and show me what's the answer, instead of taking an action, coming back, later in the meeting. So you can now see this multiple AI agents are working with you in the, and then the human to human communication becomes extremely more productive. Well, this has been an amazing conversation. I look forward to seeing all of the new innovations that come out over the next couple of years as I'll be, of course, following along. Thank you so much for joining me for this chat. And thank you all for tuning in to this 6.5 on the road here at WebEx One in San Diego. Please like and subscribe. Follow us along for more news at 65media.com, and we will see you next time.